What's up guys, Lee Constantino here, all the way over from the UK, and today I'm at the Bodybuilding.com headquarters to take you guys through one of my Herculean trainer workouts. This is a hypertrophy volume workout. So we are training to build muscle, but we're also using higher volume, lots of reps going on, and we're gonna be using some advanced training techniques in this workout today. So it's gonna be a lot of reps, quite short rest periods, but not enough time that I won't be able to answer your questions. We're gonna start off with a bit of warming up. Um, I've done some foam rolling already. We're gonna get the trigger point ball, which is a lacrosse ball. And we're gonna get that into kind of the traps, the neck, the lats, and we're gonna get a bit more mobilization through the back, because today it's back and biceps. Let's go over to the wall and get a bit more warmed up. So I've had a pre-workout about 20 minutes ago. Um, today I had the Ergo pre-workout. You can get that on bodyboy.com. I'm usually having the um, pre, pre-caged by Cage Muscle, um, but this one's getting me pretty amped up and I can really feel my hands shaking already, but it's, uh, it's good to take your pre-workout about 20, 30 minutes before you train because you want your stomach to be settled when you work out. You don't really want to be um, taking it and then going straight into your workout because for one, the, the pre-workout won't kick in and also, um, you know, you don't want that heavy stomach feeling when you train. You want to be quite light in your stomach especially if you've got quite a high volume workout. So we're just going around the rear delts here, and then we're gonna go into more of the trap area. Now, I get quite tight traps, so um, I, I need to get the trigger point ball in. Because it gets a bit more targeted than the foam roller, you see the foam roller kind of spreads the pressure across your back, whereas the trigger point ball or a lacrosse ball like I've got here can really get into the smaller areas and uh, loosen up your back. And by having a looser back and more mobility, you're able to better contract those muscles, um, which is gonna help you build bigger, bigger back muscles or bigger chest, whatever you're training. So we're gonna get right into those rear delts first. The rear delts tighten up quite a lot when you train your back. So by loosening up before we train them, we are gonna better utilize our lats or our traps, depending on what we're focusing on. So yeah, getting right into the traps now. Doesn't look like a lot, but just by leaning against the wall, using um, kind of my, my body weight, I can get deeper into the, deeper into the traps. And it's very subtle movements. You don't really want to be rolling fast over it because your muscles are going to tighten up. You want to be doing really slow movements so you can um, relax your muscles when you're leaning into them. Okay, so that's kind of like my traps. Now I've done my lats, I foam rolled my lats. We've got the traps warmed up and now we're gonna start off with our first exercise. So we're gonna go over to the cable machine. And so the first exercise that we are gonna do is a straight arm pull down. So we're gonna do a pre-exhaust for the lats today. So we're using an isolation exercise which is gonna really focus in on the lats. So we're gonna set up right here or here. I usually go to the one which is already at the top, trying to save some energy. <laughs> and we are gonna get the wide bar for this. Okay, so we're gonna go for, you know, we don't wanna go too wide on these. You wanna go just outside shoulder width. I see a lot of people going really wide to like the ends of the bath when they do this exercise, but we don't want to go too wide because you're going to lose that connection with your lats. So we're going to start around here. I'm going to add a decent amount of weight just to start with. So we've got 15 reps here, just warming up. Five more. That's it. 
so 15 reps. I'm just gonna actually start my timer now because I like to regulate my rest periods. When I'm doing higher volume training, um, usually keep the rest quite short. So today we've got 45 seconds on this first exercise because it's not super intense. Um, we're not going for super heavy weight. So rest periods are quite short. And then um, we've got four, four sets on this. The final set, which I'll show you when we get to it, is a triple drop set where we really burn out and get those lats fired up. That was a bit too easy, as you guys saw, so I'm gonna increase the weight. The thing with doing higher volume training is you don't wanna increase the weight too quickly, um, and you don't wanna jump up too much because you aren't gonna be able to hit the reps, especially in this workout, because it is a volume workout. I have set the rep target as 15, so if you were failing at nine or eight, then you've gone too heavy too soon. So just drop the weight back down and make sure you're hitting those 15 reps for the sets, okay? Okay, we're gonna go back into our second set. Again, not too wide. Keep a slight bend in your elbows on this exercise and take a small step back and have a slight bend in your knees as well. You don't wanna be too locked out um, in your knees, so you wanna take a slight bend, sit, stick your butt out, and then we're going. We're pulling the bar right into your hips. So you're breathing in as you extend, breathe out as you pull. A little squeeze at the bottom as well. So yeah, really feeling those lats. Now, getting the heart rate up. So you're kind of warming up with this first exercise at the same time as actually training at the same time. So you don't need to spend hours or you know doing lots of warm up before this higher volume workout. You don't really need to be getting on a treadmill. You can just do a bit of foam rolling like I did, a bit of trigger point, get into the lats, and this is kind of your warm up at the same time. So we have a question from What's the difference? Oh, sorry. What's the difference between rope and straight bar? Okay, so a question on YouTube: What's the difference between a, a rope and a straight bar pull down? See, I find the straight bar um, prevents any unwanted movement. I find when you use the rope and you start kind of separating the the ropes up, you start activating more of your triceps. Now, when we're trying to isolate the lats, the bar keeps you in a fixed position. You can keep that nice rigid position with your elbows and you can really focus on squeezing through the lats. That's my personal opinion. If you feel it more doing a rope, then that's cool and you can do that. But I personally find using the straight bar just contracts my lats and allows me to engage it a lot better. Okay, so we've got third set. <coughs> Let's go up and wait again. Thought you guys calling me out for going too light on this workout today. <laughs> Even though it's a volume workout. All right, let's go. Oh, yes. As you guys see, I always take the bar through full range. You know, even if you're fatiguing, don't, don't start cutting the reps short just to make up the numbers. Still take your muscle through the full range. You wanna get that stretch through every single rep and you still wanna keep that contraction at the top. So never sacrifice your form just because you've increased the weight. Always focus on the form over weight. Okay, I think we have another question coming in. Question. Which, uh, Z asks, how do you stay lean all year round? <laughs> how do I stay lean all year round? Well, I don't stay super lean all year round, personally. Right now, I've just trimmed up. I've got dialed in for a competition, a men's physique competition. So, you know, what you see now is me kind of one week post-show. Um, but generally, I like to stay 
within like the 10 to 12% body fat range where I'm happy, I'm healthy, um, I'm functional, I'm still able to lift a good amount of weight, but not over heavy that I don't feel comfortable anymore. So for me, it's um, a matter of tracking my nutrition on a day-to-day -day basis, and that helps me stay in check um, and prevents me from going OTT and kind of gaining unwanted body fat. All right, we have a question from Facebook. What's your favorite exercise to build upper lats? My favorite exercise to build upper lats are usually kind of pull-downs or pull-ups. It depends what we're talking about, because if we're talking about lat width, um, I usually go for like wide pull-ups or pull-downs, kind of focusing on the lat width. Um, if it's more lat thickness at the top, it will be more kind of T-bar row in a bent over position. Okay guys, so we've got one more set. Now this is a triple drop set, so I'm gonna increase the weight once more, and we're gonna drop the weight by 25% for each consecutive set, and that'll conclude this first exercise, okay? Let's go. So this is high intensity. Take a few breaths. Make sure your weight's in your knees, your core's engaged. All right, let's go. So without any rest, we're dropping the weight. I'm gonna drop it down. We we'll drop to 70. Make sure you don't hit your head. <laughs> Let's go. So we're really burning out here. One more drop. Heart rate is going up. I'm gonna go down to 50 now for this third and final drop. A few deep breaths. Let's go. Really squeezing out. Don't lose the form. It's burning. 10. Thirteen, two more. One more. Ah. Woo. Really getting fire in those lats now. All right, now we're warm, we can take the jacket off. Okay, so that's the first exercise. Warm up, kind of first exercise, same time. Hitting the pump. We're gonna move on. BCAAs. Let's get my breath back two seconds. <laughs> we're gonna move on to the single arm dumbbell row now. So we're really gonna isolate the lats with a compound exercise. So you see what we've done there? We've gone from, sorry, a compound exercise, not to isolate, but to maximize some load through the lats. So we've started off with a straight arm pull down to really fire up and engage the lats and make sure they are fully active. Now we're moving on to a compound exercise to really focus on each individual side. So it's a iso, <coughs> excuse me, isolateral movement. Okay, just gonna. All right, 12 to 15 reps on this one. Um, so the weights are all in pounds here in the bodybuilding at Comet HQ. We're used to um, kilograms over in the UK, so I've got to work things out. We've got a question coming in, so let me just answer this question before my first set. So high volume training, one of the, good, one of the key benefits is that it breaks away from the, um, the heavier lifting. So if you've been lifting heavy for several weeks, so like the Herculean Trainer program that I've created, you know, the first three weeks are heavy hypertrophy training. So you're lifting fairly maximal weights, um, but you can't sustain this for a long period of time before you, know, you reach that point of diminishing returns and then you start dropping off weight um, and your training starts going backwards. So having higher volume um, sets and, and periods of training will allow your muscles to recuperate 
um, and it also um, triggers some muscle growth um, in, a different, in a different path to kind of heavy strength training. So high volume training also kind of helps you um, relax a little bit because you don't have to go into training feeling stressed out about lifting heavy weights. You can just kind of go into the gym, smash a lot of reps, get that pump, and you can leave feeling pretty satisfied. All right, let's go. First set. Um, one thing I'm going to do first is I like to set up the bench with a slight incline. <coughs> so this is kind of the position that I like to start, keep my keep the bench at. Little elevation for the back knee. Um, this stops you kind of like overreaching when the bench is flat. So I like to keep a little bit higher up, which I'll show you now. I don't know what pounds we're using here. We're going for 12 to 15 reps. So let's start with 55 pounds, whatever that is in kilograms. <clears throat> okay. So make sure you square your hips up for this exercise. You want your, everything to be nice and square. Supporting arm, you want to keep a slight bend in the elbow. You don't want to be locked out like this because you're going to put strain in the elbow and the uh, shoulder joint. <clears throat> nice square hips. Brace your core. Grab the dumbbell, let's go. Okay, so we're gonna do both sides. Nice little trick. If your bench has got space, just roll the dumbbell underneath it. Saves you from like hoisting the dumbbell over. We want to try and conserve energy for those working sets. Okay, so other side. Get that. Square the hips. Slight bend in the elbows. Make sure your core is tight as well. So we're bracing the abs. Go. So that was a decent weight for that first set. Definitely gonna go up, because we're trying to fail that between 12 and 15. And I got 15 reps there, so we're gonna increase the weight, try and bring those reps down after the 60 second rest. Question, uh, coming in. What pre-workout did you take today? <laughs> so usually I take cage muscles um, pre-cage. Today I took the Ergo pre-workout. Um, it's got about 300 milligrams of caffeine, so it's quite a strong pre-workout. Definitely getting me hyped up. And if you guys want to grab that, you can go to bodybuilding.com, of course, and get the, using the uh, Be Elite um, special, which you can get um, free delivery over $49 for you guys here in the US. So yeah, good pre-workout so far. Feeling pretty pumped from it. Okay, let's increase the weight. Something I also do when I go heavier with a particularly dumbbell or barbell exercises is I use VersaGrip wraps just to um, allow me to get the reps I'm aiming for and not fail just because my forearms are fatigued. I know a lot of people say, oh, you should try and strengthen your grip, but I'm trying to bodyboard, I'm trying to build my back. And if my forearm's failing me during the workout, then I'm not gonna be able to build my back. So for you guys who wonder why I'm using the grips, that's my reason. Cool, so let's grab Let's go for a 70 kilo, 70 pound dumbbell. Not 70 kilos, definitely not. Okay, I'm gonna go and grab my Versa Grip wraps for this set so I can get the reps. So, just around here. So these, I prefer these to wraps personally. You can, uh, you get a better grip with them as you put them around the dumbbell. Seems to stick better to, my, to your hands as well. So you can see getting quite pumped up from this workout. Heart rate is definitely, definitely up there. So we've got, got the Versa Grips ready. <clears throat> 12 to 15 reps. Set two of set four. Should be able to smash these out now with the grips.
Then roll the dumbbell underneath. So if you notice, guys, when I'm doing this exercise, my, I'm keeping my chin down. I see a lot of guys and girls in the gym kind of looking up, like looking at the mirror, because they've seen it in a fitness magazine. When you actually do this exercise, keep your chin pointing down, keep your spine in neutral. So you don't want to be doing any of this because you're going to strain something in your neck, okay? So let's grab the dumbbell, work on this other side, even it out. I've got 15 there. We'll get 15 here. We've got 50, 60 seconds rest. Time for a question. Uh, CCRF from YouTube asks, what's your favorite bodybuilding meal? My favorite bodybuilding meal. Hmm. Well, they're, they're all quite similar, aren't they? I do like white flesh sweet potatoes for a carb sauce. They're probably my favorite carbs. Um, they're quite sweet. I like anything sweet, so they're quite tasty. Um, a good seasoned chicken breast never goes, you know, is, is always pretty good. And I like a good cut of steak as well, like a fillet steak, real lean piece of meat. And of course, a portion of veggies as well. Keep that gut health. I keep it quite simple, you know, I'm not, I don't use a lot of fancy food. I keep my food quite simple. I'm um, in the UK, I've got the other food company who, who uh, send me food because food prep for me is quite a chore. And I like to make my life a bit easier in that respect so I can focus on the other things like helping clients, um, training people and all that stuff. So that's what I like to do. Uh, we also had somebody ask about the wrist wraps. What are they and what do they do? So these are Versa grips. Um, there's various variations of these that you can get, um, but they essentially allow you to grip a dumbbell or barbell a lot easier than your, your own hand strength. Because um, the forearms tend to fatigue um, sooner than your back muscle. So, I'm using them today because I'm trying to focus on getting the reps. And if the lactic acid is building up too much in my arm, I'm gonna fail early. So we're using the grips just to add a bit more strength in the pull and focusing more on lat engagement. All right, guys, so we're gonna go into set three. I'm gonna really put the weight up now because you know I feel like I'm going a bit easy because it's live. Let's put the weight up. <laughs> Again, <clears throat> I don't know what pounds convert to kilos here. Where are we going? <laughs> are we going over here? Let's get one that looks pretty cool. What's 105? I have no idea what that is in kilos. Feels pretty heavy though, so we're gonna try it. Oh cool, that works. 47, 48 kilos. <laughs> so 47, 48 kilos for my people back home in the UK. We were trying this workout, 105 pounds for my US people. Still getting 12 to 15 reps, yeah? We're not gonna sacrifice form too much. Might be a little bit looser, but still keeping the lats tight. All right, let's go. That was a good weight. If you guys notice, I'm pulling the dumbbell in towards my hip rather than kind of pulling it up into my shoulder. That's where you start getting kind of injuries in your neck. So you want to pull the dumbbell in towards the hip bone, okay? We're going to swivel over to the other side, just about get it underneath. It's that beast over there. There's a beast in the gym, guys by the name of Reyna. <coughs> He's come to make me look small. Go back over there, man. <laughs> okay, 12 reps. Let's get it.
working. <laughs> now we're working. <sighs> Definitely feeling the pump. Um, <clears throat> So I've been bodybuilding, natural bodybuilding, my ad, for 12 years. So since I was 15, first walked into the gym, my brother, we trained chest triceps, back biceps, and we skipped legs. But that doesn't happen anymore. So 12 years I've been lifting, properly bodybuilding and competing for around six, seven years now, um, which is when I really started to take control of my nutrition and understand how my body worked a lot better. So the first four or five years learning, past six, seven years have just been kind of refining and advancing my knowledge. So quite a, quite a few years in the gym training. We got one more from Twitch. Uh, Rodoku uh, asks, what should I focus on to keep good form with the dumbbell row when I'm fatiguing? Uh, okay, it's a good question. So to keep good form with the dumbbell row, you want to make sure your core is engaged. So you can't really see it here. I'm actually going to use the belt on my next set just to make sure I'm fully engaging my core but I'm engaging my core, I'm also squeezing my glutes. Because when, you, um, when you're not engaging these areas, your back sensor just kind of round off like this. And that's when the wrong muscles start to use. So if your core is tight, your glutes are engaged, and you're keeping your shoulders kind of pulled down into the movement rather than up here, you're gonna keep a lot better form, and you're gonna better isolate those lats, okay? All right, let's go, let's go up for this last set. So this is a, no, sorry, this is a third set. This is the third set, so we've got two more sets to make four. That's set three, right? Yeah, three. Okay, we've got one more set after this. Losing count, see you guys. When you go that hard. So I'm going to stay on this weight for this third set. And the final set, which is a rest pause set, I will increase the weight slightly. Let's see if we make it. <laughs> okay. So on the next heavy set, I will wear a belt just to keep my back nice and braced. Okay. So core tight, glutes tight. Breathe in, hold your breath. Let's go. side. Make sure the form is still there guys. Don't sacrifice the form. Take a second after that set. As you can see guys, volume training, you should be sweating, you should feel your heart rate pumping, and you should feel like you're doing cardio. And that's a great thing about a workout like this, it acts as your cardio session as well. And that's why I've included it as, you know, within my program because you know, it's designed to strip body fat and maintain muscle. So we've still got the intensity there but also burning a lot of calories as well. All right, I'm gonna go a bit heavier for this last set. Let's see what we've got on the pound rack. Okay, I'm just gonna slide this one back. Again, save energy, guys. Use your feet, don't kick it too hard. Just roll it gently, all right? That's 105. I'll get it from up here. Make sure you're back straight as well when you're picking up these heavy dumbbells. It's not worth losing your back on a, on a resting set. <laughs> All right, pounds to kilos. 
We're going to be sensible. Let's go 115. What's 115? 50 kilo. All right, we'll go 115. Because, like I said, if this is a heavy session, we might want to go heavy. But because it's a volume workout, we want to still keep the reps in. So we've got around 50, 52 kilos here. And it's a rest pause set, which I'll explain in just a second. I'm going to belt up for this set as well. Just because I want to make sure my core is engaged and I'm not losing that form. All right, so give me two seconds. I'm going to grab the belt. Okay, so we've got the old school weightlifting belt here from the Arnie days, I think. <laughs> a little tip when you guys are putting a belt on. Try to breathe in before you put the belt on. Because if you put it on with a relaxed stomach, you're not going to get it tight enough. So breathe in. Make sure you're getting your clothes out of the way. Your singlet or your vest. And any wires that you might be wearing. That's it. So you want to keep the belt nice and low. You don't want it too high in your chest because you can't breathe. So this set is a rest pause. So what that means is we're going to do a set on the right side. We're going to go to concentric failure, again, aiming for around 12 reps now. And then we're going to have a 10 to 15 second rest. So I'm going to check my watch. I'm going to count probably about 15 seconds for this last set. Then we're going to go again on the same right side until failure. Okay, and then we're going to do the same on the left side. All right, let's go. I'm trying to imagine there's some music pumping through my head. Yeah. So 15 seconds rest, just enough time to catch your breath briefly. We're going to go in, probably get around six, seven reps. I'm going to aim for three, two, one. So I felt my form go in there, called it a day. If you feel like your form's really gonna fade, don't try and do the extra rep. Just stop there. All right, let's go left side now. Let's see if this one goes underneath. Will we make it? Not quite. It's like a game. There we go. <laughs> I'm trying to save every bit of energy for this workout. All right, let's straighten the bench out. My OCD. I don't like them benches that offer angles here. All right, we're going to do this set. Then we're going to take some questions while I rest. <laughs> okay, bring the dumbbell in close. So you don't want the dumbbell over here because you don't want to be overreaching to pick it up because that's actually where people get injured overreaching before they've even started the set so bring it in nice and close get your wraps or your chalk whatever make sure you grip the dumbbell <sighs> gotta get 12 reps to even out the set let's go <clears throat> seconds rest We're breathing heavy now heavy weights they just get you going right or moderate to heavy all right three two one let's go six reps up uh. 
So that's how you do a rest pause, guys. Super intense way to finish your working sets. Let's take some questions. <laughs> All right, so this is from YouTube. MCO Parkour asks, what kind of cardio do you do other than weight? All right, so my favorite form of cardio is HIIT training. So that's high intensity interval training. One of my secret weapons is dead mill sprints, which um, they really get you going. I find my time is very limited in the day. I don't have a lot of time for the low intensity kind of outdoor walks and treadmill walks. So I like to keep it short, five to 10 minute, 10 to 20 second sprint with relatively short 40 to 60 second rest periods. That, help, that works for me. Uh, next question is from Matthew on Facebook. Uh, why do you prefer the raised incline versus the flat bench? Okay, so having, a, having, the, dumb, having the bench raised slightly um, prevents you from overreaching your back. So if I just flatten this out quick, very quickly, um, I find that this position, you end up top, you're, over, you're overreaching your, um, your torso here. So you end up kind of using the wrong muscle for this exercise. Whereas we're trying to focus on our lats, having the bench slightly raised allows you to pull your shoulder down to better engage the lat that we're trying to work. They also know what app are you using on your, on your watch? This is the, um, I think it's just the workout app on Apple. Definitely the beats per minute aren't accurate because I'm way higher than that. But this is just an Apple watch. There's the built-in app which kind of I use to regulate my rest. And it also helps me gauge how many um, steps I'm doing daily, the uh, active calories I'm burning during the workout, just for awareness. I'm not really fixated on it. I just like to look at it every now and then. Uh, Lee asks, can we have a quick recap on the pros of wearing a belt and using wrist straps? Okay, so pros of wearing a belt. It's not to make your waist smaller, okay? <laughs> a lot of people think wearing a belt makes your waist smaller. Um, it doesn't, what it allows you to do is it reminds you to engage your core. Right, so if, you're, if you've got a belt on, something's pressing against you, it reminds you to engage your core, which will prevent you from um, rounding your back and getting injuries in the lower back area. So for me, it's just like an awareness to keep my core tight as I do any kind of bent over exercises. And the wraps, I use these just to add a bit more grip strength so I can handle slightly heavier weights. Uh, my forearms tend to die very easily. And so if I'm trying to build my back and my forearms are dying, I'm not gonna get the same amount of intensity here where I want to grow the muscle. So these just allow me to lift that bit heavier weight and prevent my forearms from dying. All right, guys, we're gonna move on. Put the dumbbells away first. We always put the weights away no matter what gym we're at, right? We don't leave dumbbells out. That's not very nice. Okay, so I'm moving on to a superset now. So a superset is two exercises performed back to back with zero rest. For any of you guys who don't know what a superset is. So it's very intense. We're gonna be doing a wide lat pull down, focusing on the lat width. And then we're gonna superset with a close grip seated cable row, kind of more back thickness. And we're doing sets of 10 repetitions. We don't really need the wraps of these because we're not handling heavy weights. But I do need a drink of BCAAs. Okay. So we're going for the wide bar here. We're gonna place it at the top. And just to make sure we're ready, we're gonna set up for the second exercise, which is the seated cable row. I'm trying to be efficient with time here so we're not um, messing around in between the supersets. We wanna try and keep that intensity up. And there, pick a weight which you can comfortably do 10 on for this first set, because you can always increase it. You'd rather increase the weight than have to drop it back down. Okay. Again, okay, working to pounds here, so I'm still kind of guessing a little bit. Before I start my set, I always check the positioning of the knee rest to make sure that my legs are fully um, locked underneath it, and there's no kind of room, because if you've got all this room, you end up kind of moving 
with the exercise. So you want to make sure your legs are fully locked underneath it before we start the exercise. Go slightly wider for these 10 reps. Okay, so lock the legs underneath it. Before you start the exercise, always make sure you pull your shoulder blades down first, so engaging the lats, and then go. So that was a moderate weight for me. I'm definitely going to increase it on the next set, but it was just to get that engagement, making sure I'm using my lats, trying not to use too much momentum. All right, so seated cable row. Again, get your feet ready. Take your hips right back. Core tight. Squeeze. Decent weight, I probably increased the weight a little bit now. Um, if you noticed when I was doing both of these exercises, um, the focus point is the elbow. So the elbow is driving the bar down, and your elbows are driving the, the, the weight back here. So if you think about that when you're doing any kind of cable rowing movements, it will allow you to better engage and isolate your lats rather than thinking pulling from your hands. That's when you start kind of adding all this extra movement that we don't want to do. We've got a question coming in. All right, this is from Twitch. Uh, Professor Meritus asks, how do you deal with pulled muscles? Pulled muscles? If I've pulled a muscle, um, particularly during a workout, which I have done in the past, say doing a leg day, or maybe overdoing it on a deadlift, I'll pretty much stop right there. Um, you know, I won't... Uh, I won't train through it. I don't think that's a smart thing to do. I think it's important to rest. Um, and I usually try and stretch out the area that is, that is tightened up. Because usually uh, the muscle is pulled, it's, it's shortened, it's tightened. And I try and do a very, very gentle stretch, ease off any tension. Um, and then I'll get some sort of therapy, get a physio or a professional to look at it. Um, and then I won't train it until I feel like it's um, you know, back to work in order. So I'm not trying to... Um, train through an injury. Let's go back onto our second set. I've kept, the, I've kept the belt on for this. I don't know why I just, again, like I said, it helps me just engage my core better and um, just reminds me to keep, keep my posture good. Just a reminder to myself, we've got four sets here, okay? Um, which I know, I know it seems like a lot of sets to some of you guys for a volume workout, but this is, five weeks into my Herculean program. So you guys would have built up in the, built the intensity up throughout the first four weeks. So this is kind of like the peak before the final week, which is why we've got four working sets. Um, and we've got supersets in here as well. So let's go, set two. That's quite ambitious jump, but it's all good. You guys noticed my butt was kind of lifting up a little bit there um, just from the heavier weight. That's so why you've got to keep always consciously trying to ground yourself, pull your shoulders down each rep so you don't end up kind of getting this momentum. And vascular, man. <laughs> His workout gets you pumped. That I'll guarantee. So I'll say that's a perfect weight for both the lat pull down and the seated cable row for me, failing just around that 10 rep mark, which is um, ideal for this hypertrophy volume workout. 
keeping the rest fairly short. 60 seconds. We're back in for the third set. Um, Questions coming in. Uh, we have a question from Facebook. They say, Lee, are you Cypriot or Greek? So I am, I am actually Greek Cypriot, half Greek Cypriot, which uh, my, my father's side are from Cyprus. Um, so that's half of my family's background. And my other half is from Guyana, South America, my mother's side. Um, but I was born in the UK, born and brought up in North London. So yeah, bit of a mixture. <laughs> For you guys who aren't sure where I'm from, <laughs> bit of a wedgie. So we're gonna stick to the weight. I'm not trying to train our ego here, I'm trying to train our lats. Awesome, we got a question from Twitch. Buckeye Dave asks, what's the proper amount of leaning back while doing back Yeah, so at the moment, as you guys can see towards the end of the set, I'm having a slight lean back. Um, pretty to try and get the reps. You know, in an ideal world, you would say super strict and dead straight, but if you are trying to handle a little bit heavier weights, a slight lean back is okay. Um, as long as it doesn't become momentum, which is initiating the movement. As long as you keep your lats, your shoulders pulled down, and you actually pull from the lats, you'll get a good amount of load through the muscle, as opposed to kind of using a lot of hip movement. So very subtle is okay. All right, let's go, third set. Let's go. As opposed to leaning back to get the rep all the way down, I personally like to kind of take it a little bit higher up, just to make sure I'm not kind of cheating just to get the bar down. So zero rest, super set. We're going one exercise to the other. There's no time for rest until after the second exercise. So, another little tip for you guys, doing any kind of row movement, imagine you're pushing your chest forward um, what, uh, as opposed to bringing the weight back. Because if all you're thinking about is doing this, you're, not, you're gonna be using momentum and activating the lower back. If you think about pulling your chest, pushing your chest forward as the weight comes in, you'll get a better squeeze through the back. So we have one more set to go. We'll have one more question maybe before this final set. <sighs> Give me some extra rest. <laughs> um, so, Twitch, my shoulders sometimes hurt when I'm doing lat pull downs. What do you think I'm doing wrong? So if you're getting any shoulder pain from a lat pull down, I personally think um, you're going too wide. So if you go too wide on the pull down, you're gonna put a lot of stress through the rotator cuffs. Um, so try taking your hands in slightly so you can pull your shoulder blades down before the movement. If you go too wide and your shoulders are up here in your ears, you are gonna use a lot of the rotator cuffs to kind of pull the weight. So try bringing your hands in slightly, pull your shoulder blades down to activate your lats. You shouldn't feel anything in the shoulder doing a lat pull down. You might feel a little bit of rear delt, but it should be very, very subtle. You should feel most of the weight going through your lats. Okay, last set. Last set, 10 reps on each exercise, and we move on to the final back exercise. Definitely failure for me. <laughs> Nothing more. Ah! <sighs> 
All right, so that concludes that super set. So we did four sets, lap pull downs, and seated cable row of 10 reps. Time to move on to the final back exercise, which is a dumbbell pullover. Okay, so this is like post fatigue um, to really finish off the lats. Get a quick drink. Mr. Kiz, Mr. Kizito E Jam, our very own. All right, so, woo, three sets of 15 reps we've got here. Question from uh, YouTube, how often do you do cardio? Okay, so cardio for me right now, um, as I was in prep for a show, I was doing three to four high intensity interval training sessions per week, which would only be like five to 10 minutes. And then I would always have a step target using my Apple Watch or iPhone of 10,000 daily steps. And that for me was kind of like my low intensity cardio and it didn't it wasn't I didn't call it cardio I just kind of did it um, and that worked quite well for me so yeah four hit sessions 10,000 steps daily and uh, yeah a calorie deficit to get leaner okay. so we're gonna sit up here so for the dumbbell pullover I go sideways off the bench I don't like to lie flat on the bench because I like to keep my hips low so I can get a big stretch through my lats. So I'll show you how that looks, guys. 15 reps here. I'm gonna start with a 55 pound dumbbell just to get a feel of the weight. We've got quite a few sets here so I can always increase the weight um, without sacrificing my form. Okay, so we're gonna to come to the edge of the bench. Make sure you're um, your, your feet are squ uh, square on, hips nice and low. I'm actually gonna take my hat off for this because I wanna keep my head supported on the bench. You don't wanna have your head raised up like this because you'll strain your neck. So we're supporting our head on the bench. Grab the dumbbell with a diamond grip. And we're gonna stretch and squeeze. 15 reps. And squeeze. Stretch. Three more. When you finish, just take a big stretch and then place it down. Then take a seat on the floor. <laughs> Woo! So yeah, you can really feel that isolating the lats. I know I can. So if you, when you do the exercise, you wanna make sure you don't kind of Bring your shoulders up like this. You wanna keep everything pulling down. Um, keep your shoulders pulling down so your lats are doing the work. All right, we're gonna have a very short 30 second rest. Um, time for a question while I rest. Uh, what, uh, what is the importance of taking BCAAs into the workout? So I like to take BCAAs during a workout, um, especially when I'm in a caloric deficit. So that is trying to burn body fat and retain muscle. And I take it as a preventative to losing muscle tissue during training because you're more predisposed to burning muscle tissue once you're in a caloric deficit. So I supplement with five to 10 grams of powder BCAAs during my workout. Um, today I've used some of the Ergo stuff because we've got it here at thebodybuilder.com HQ. Um, and obviously if you guys want that, it's on the site as well under the B Elite range. You get that free delivery with $49 spend. All right, let's go. And increase the weight just a little bit. Let's go 60 pounds. If you are by yourself for this exercise, the best thing to do 
Place the dumbbell on the side of the bench. Take your seat first. Get into the position that you're gonna do the movement from, okay? So this is where I'm doing the exercise. I don't wanna pick it up yet, because I'm not fully in position. Make sure your head is down. You got your neck supported, your hips are in position. Take the dumbbell, bring it up in front of your chest, ready to go. Breathe in, up, squeeze. Five more. Eleven. Twelve. So always go through the full stretch. Guys, never compromise that stretch if you want to build your lats. Question. Question from YouTube. Uh, here, how often do you do cardio? <laughs> People love cardio. You guys love cardio, don't you? So as I said um, a bit earlier, I do cardio four hit sessions a week, I'll say. Three to four hit sessions a week. They're only five to ten um, um, minutes of interval training. So it's very short, sharp bursts of training. Um, and then I try to do 10,000 daily steps, which is activity throughout the day. It might be a walk in the evening. Um, I just try and keep really active to kind of meet a, a calorie expenditure for the day. All right, this is more of a statement. Uh, Melissa is at work trying not to get caught watching this. <laughs> well, Melissa, you've come to the right place. <laughs> okay, so this is set three of four. Sorry, my bad. This is set three, third and final set but it's a triple drop set here. So this is the final back exercise, and it's the final set, and we're gonna go for a triple drop to really post fatigue and burn out anything left in these lats. Three sets in one, so triple drop set. Zero rest between each set, we're dropping the weight, dropping the weight, dropping the weight. I'm gonna stay on the 60 pounds, because if I go any heavier, I'm probably gonna sacrifice form, and I don't wanna take away any of that stretch from the exercise. So we're gonna go 50, sorry, 60. Then we're gonna to move to 50. And then we're gonna go straight down. We'll go to 40, we'll go to 45 pounds, just cause it's here. So the first set is 15 reps. And then we're gonna try and get as close as we can to 15 reps on each set. All right. We've been going for 55 minutes. You guys should be getting a good pump if you're joining us today for this workout here at thebodyboarding.com HQ. <laughs> All right, let's go. Keep those hips down. Don't lose the form. So no rest. Gonna get the next dumbbell. Yeah. I sweat in my eyes. <laughs> okay. Straight in. <sighs> so get in position. Feet square, hips down. Maybe change hands now. Take a different hand in front. Ah, pump. Ah. 
Uh, uh. Sorry, I only got 10 there, guys. I feel the form was gonna fade if I was to try and do any more. We've got one more set. Uh. Oh, why did I write this workout? <laughs> what was I thinking? Now, this is a great workout, guys, if you wanna burn a lot of calories and you're trying to get leaner. That's what this workout's for. <laughs> Getting lean. Not just lean, Herculean. <laughs> Going a bit delirious now. So I got 10 on that as well, but failure. That was definitely as hard as could have gone as you guys could see. Huh? Get that nice lap pump, guys. Let's see, looking from the back. So yeah, my lats are fired up. If you guys have done this workout today, we're not finished yet, but if you guys have done that back workout, you know just what I'm talking about. So yeah, it's now time to move on to biceps. So volume workout, which means it's very intense. And this is gonna, this is gonna really burn um, because we've got uh, three exercises, one after another. I call this a Titan set. You guys might know it as a giant set, but we call this a Titan set in Herculean. So we're doing three exercises back to back to back. So I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna have a quick drink first, get my BCAAs in. Uh, we're gonna put the dumbbells away, because someone else wants to come and use them, I'm sure. And then we're gonna burn out these biceps. Yep, straight bar. All right, this is gonna be fun. So each exercise has four sets of 12, uh, very high reps. We're gonna be accumulating across the three sets. We're gonna put these, put these away. It gives you a chance to get some rest as well when you're putting your dumbbells away. A bit of extra cardio, and for you guys who love doing your cardio, don't leave the dumbbells out. Okay, so the first exercise we have is a straight bar cable curl. Okay. So we're going to set up. I'm going to set up right here. Excuse me. BCAs. <laughs> All right. So we've got the straight bar. Just going to check the weight. Yeah. Okay. We're going to set up the other two exercises as well, so we're not wasting any time. So we're going to go right here. Um, this is the third exercise. So. Probably a bit, a bit higher, so this is for the incline dumbbell curl. And we've also got some standing alternate dumbbell curls, so we're just going to use the open space here. So exercise one, straight bar cable curls. Exercise two, alternate curls. Exercise three, incline dumbbell curls. 12 reps. Right. Still trying to work out these pounds, so we're just going to roll with it. First set, moderate weight. Let's try and get a feel for the exercise. Full stretch always. Nice. We're just going to take that exercise through a full stretch. So you're getting that stretch through the long head of the bicep. 12 reps here. So, okay, focusing on form. I'm just gonna start with a mod at 25 pounds, just to get that form nice and tight. Slight bend in the knees. I'm 
rotation at the top. Getting that baby finger up. Keep the shoulders down. Two more. Seven. Twelve. Okay, so for the incline dumbbell curl, you're gonna have to def definitely drop the weight down because it um, isolates the biceps a lot more. And uh, quite an intense exercise doing it after those first two. So we've got the bench at the incline, take a seat back, make sure your back's flat, lock those elbows in, pump. smoke that is a pump <laughs> so that's a titan set guys sweat pump and we've got three more of those with a relatively short rest period we're going to take a question in between the rest any questions coming in from youtube facebook or twitch we got the professor on twitch wants to know what your current split is looking like so my current training split um which is pretty much from this workout that you're seeing here today. It's a push on Monday, so it's usually chest, shoulders, and triceps. Tuesday is legs, so lower body, quads, glutes, hamstrings, calves. Wednesday is rest. Thursday is pull, so like back biceps, which you're seeing right here. Then Friday, I do an extra push workout, focusing more on shoulders, um, because I'm trying to focus on my shoulders to bring them up. So push, shoulders, chest, and triceps. So it's a Four day split. That's four or five, four day split. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have a quick drink. Go back into the straight arm cable curls. And I'm gonna increase the weight slightly on this one um, just to keep, keep that intensity up. We're almost there guys. Hang in there if you're joining me today on this workout. Okay, squeeze. Keep those elbows pointing down. No elbow movement. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, okay. Jeez. If you guys are enjoying this workout, make sure you give this uh, some hearts, some likes, you know, double tap. I know that's how this thing works, right? You've got to double tap and give us some love on the video and share it out as well if you feel like um, it's gonna benefit somebody that you know or someone's trying to build a bigger back or bigger biceps. Share this workout with them. I'm sure they'll appreciate the, the pump. All right, let's go. The more hearts you give, the more reps I do, guys. Come on. <laughs> fight those last few reps. It's okay to lose your form a little bit on the uh, alternate curls, as long as you're not kind of leaning right back into it and doing any kind of fat Joe lean back style. A little bit of movement's all right, you know, just to, just to get that rep to the top where you can squeeze your bicep. Um, but these ones, you can't really cheat on them, which is why I put them at the end. So you've got to stay locked in, keep your core tight, elbows in tight to the body, and you've just got to fight through these reps. <sighs> One thing as well you might notice I do is I've actually got my feet up 
on the, on the bench here. If you haven't got that, just put your feet out in front of you because what that means is you will flatten your back out and you'll avoid any of this kind of like archy movements where you're kind of swinging the dumbbells up. So we're going to keep our back flat to the bench. So we're just using the biceps. Take a few seconds if you need to, but don't swing the dumbbells. I'm gonna have a few seconds to make sure my reps, my reps are good quality. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, okay, set two done. Oh, we're getting there. Oh, question in. So this is from YouTube. They want to know how tall you are, how much you weigh, and do you have any tips for tall people trying to put on mass? Okay, so I am six foot tall, guys. Six foot point zero five, so it's about 183 centimeters. My stage weight. So when I compete, I'm like 175 pounds, so very light. Right now, I'm probably sitting around the 180 pound mark. Um, and kind of off season, I would want to be around 84, 85 kilos, purely because I have that extra strength and that weight behind me to push weight. So for anybody who's trying to put on muscle mass, and if you guys are saying you find it hard, you probably aren't eating enough calories. So you could be training uh, as intensely as this and not gaining muscle, but if you're not putting in enough fuel into your body, you're not gonna build muscle tissue. So what that means is you need to be tracking your food, um, use a tracking app like MyFitnessPal, so you can actually understand how much you consume on a daily basis. And then from that point, you have to check and see if your weight is going up. If you're not gaining weight, then you're not eating enough. Slowly adding calories each week, 150, 200 calories each week, and I guarantee you, you will add muscle tissue in the long period. All right, guys, let's go, third set. <sighs> 68 minutes in, 355 active calories burnt. If you guys like your cardio, do this workout. Okay, so let's go straight into our second exercise, alternate dumbbell curls. If you guys are enjoying the, the tips I'm giving you in this workout today, go to Instagram and follow at Hercule Trainer. I drop, I drop a lot, lot of training tips on there as well, so you guys can um, perfect your form and um, really have an awareness of what you're doing in the gym so you um, don't get any muscle imbalances or get any injuries. So let's go, alternate dumbbell curls. Let's start with the left arm this time. seconds if you feel the form fading guys take a few seconds shake off your hands and carry on So tight and set, one, two, three exercises back to back to back. It's very intense, but um, what that means is you can really um, isolate and contract your bicep and uh, grow those arms if you're trying to get bigger arms like me. Uh, let's go. Full stretch always. Seven. 
All right, still got a few more to go. That was seven. Just taking a second to shake out. Got a lactic acid building up in the forearms here, which is taken away from the bicep. And we don't want to use any forearms on this exercise. I want to keep all the tension in the biceps. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Oh. <laughs> All right, set three. We've got one more set to go. So we're going to take some questions. 71 minutes into the workout today. Let's see what question is coming in next. Let's hope it's not about cardio, guys. Give me something else. <laughs> so I do have one on Twitch from Iconic. Wants to know how do I get a six pack? I have about 10% body fat. So a six pack, having a six, everyone's got a six pack. Um, but the lower body fat you have, the more um, revealed it will be. So if you're at 10% body fat, you should be seeing some level of definition through your midsection, but it'd be a matter of getting leaner to see them even more. Um, I found that I had really flat abs um, much of my lifting career, so when I was training, I used to have to get really, really lean to like seven, 6% body fat just to see my abs. And so what I did, I focused in my off season on building my abs. Um, I do a lot of kind of cable crunches, hanging knee raises, exercises which would build thickness into my abs and I'm now able to see them at a higher percentage body fat. And so what I would say to you is to train your abs like every other muscle group, train them to grow and you'll be able to see them at 10, 9, you know, 11% body fat with that training. All right guys, so let's do it. So we've got one more set. Um, let me just double check that there's no triple drop sets on this. I'm quite... Uh, I know this is a high volume workout. Sometimes I uh, get a bit excited, but no, we're gonna go straight in. This is a straight final set, set four, um, which is you know a decent amount of volume if you're trying to build your biceps. And we've got the same again. So we're sticking to 12 reps on each. We are not dropping the reps at all. Still keep the form tight, full range. So what I really like about the cable curl is that you have tension on the way up, but you also get tension on the way down, which is why it's um, one of my favorite bicep exercises, because you've got tension moving constantly through the bicep, through the concentric phase and the eccentric phase. What I might do on this set, because it's the final set, I'm going to go to failure on this weight. I'm going to go a bit lighter so I can get my full 12 reps. Let's go, form tight. Now rotation at the top. Squeeze the biceps. Lock at the bottom. a bit. I'm going to keep that form tight. Let's go 20 pounds. It's not a lot of weight here guys but the quality is there. Oh the pump is real. Look at that bicep vein man. Vascular bicep. Woo! All right, let's finish the set. <laughs> All right. <sighs> One thing I like to add into my pre-workout, guys, which I didn't mention when I started, is citrulline. So I usually like to add um, cage muscle, eight grams of citrulline, which I learned from Chris Gethin, and that really, really helps with the pump. So if you feel like your gym is really cold or you find it hard to get warmed up, add some citrulline into your pre-workout. And give you that vascularity. <sighs> Take it 
take a few seconds. Got to finish the reps always, guys. We're not cutting this workout short today. Let's go that seven reps. Let's finish up. Lock those elbows. Core tight. Eight. Nine. Ten. Uh, one more. And biceps. So that was the Herculean week five hypertrophy volume pull workout back and biceps. As you guys saw today, we got some reps in. The pump was ridiculous. Um, really appreciate you guys joining me here live on the bodybuilding.com Facebook page. You can follow me if you want at Lee Constantinou on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Uh, make sure you share this out as well. Like the video if you've watched it through and you've enjoyed it. Share it out with your friends. Tag a friend and all that good stuff. Appreciate you watching. Thank you for your time. And if you have any more questions, drop them below and I'll jump on this video and I'll answer them for you later on. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys very soon. <laughs>